growth is a major issue um, once a girl has been diagnosed with Turner syndrome. And this is one of my favorite pictures of a little girl trying to see how tall she is. Um, short stature or being small is seen in over 90% of girls with Turner syndrome. So it's a big issue that you talk to your pediatric endocrinologist about. So just to give you a little bit of history about growth hormone, growth hormone in the body is a protein made in the major control center in the brain called the pituitary gland. And growth hormone not only controls growth, but it has a lot of other functions and affects metabolism, bone, heart. So there are other needs for growth hormone. And actually, believe it or not, adults make growth hormone even at minimal amounts for heart reasons, bone reasons. So it's a, it's a big deal and a big need. And just to kind of set the record straight, girls with Turner syndrome are not growth hormone deficient. It's almost a growth hormone resistance. But we do know that growth hormone does work. Girls with Turner syndrome tend to fall off the growth curve by three to four years of age. Actually, about 75% do. This next slide is a picture of a growth chart, Turner syndrome growth chart, actually. The pink lines are where a girl with Turner syndrome can be expected to, to be. The 50th percentile, or where you say 50, or see 50 on the pink, is where the average adult height or average adult female will end up. And that is 4'8", without any uh, treatment. The average adult female will, will be 4'8". The red is just kind of a comparison of the normal growth chart and, and normal growth and normal heights. Unfortunately, a lot of girls at diagnosis have already fallen way below the growth curve and are needed growth hormone yesterday, basically. So that's um, unfortunately the large, large amount of patients we see. But you can start growth hormone. We've started it as uh, soon as nine months of age. So the recommendation as of the clinical, the new clinical guidelines for the treatment of Turner syndrome uh, that was published in 2017 is to start growth hormone by four to six years of age, or at least by preteen or 12 to 13 years of age for those exhibiting growth failure or for extreme short stature. Growth hormone is an injection that it is given just under the skin. It actually used to be in the muscle, much like the flu shot. So we come a long way as far as pain. It is just a little prick. And the person who actually prescribes the growth hormone will be your daughter's pediatric endocrinologist. This is a picture of what a growth hormone device actually looks like. It's called a pen device, it looks like a pen. And it has a little dialer at the end where you dial up the dose. When you uncap this little cap here, uh, you attach a little needle. And there are typically two sizes of the needle, a 29 gauge and a 32 gauge. The larger size of the gauge, the smaller the needle. So they're very, very, very tiny, as, as you can see. Where do you give growth hormone shots? Actually, just under the skin, you can use this diagram shows you you can use just the backs of the arms where you can pinch up a little skin, just on the buttocks, on the sides of the legs and kind of the fronts of the legs. And you also can use the sides of the abdomen, believe it or not, for, um, for growth hormone shots. These ones, these sites in the red are the most common and the sites that, um, that kids most often gravitate towards. I've had kids as young as six learn and love to give their own injections. Of course, the first one is a very scary one. But again, it's something that you become used to, kind of like brushing your teeth. It becomes a nighttime routine. Growth hormone physiologically, or as it normally should, is given uh, impulses most often during sleep, actually in the fourth stage of sleep. So sleeping is very important, getting a good night's sleep. But why growth hormone is given at night is to make it or is to give it in a way that's as close to the body's way as possible to kind of mimic the body's way. The first thing that, or first two things actually, that I am told at, at a follow-up visit after starting growth hormone for Turner Syndrome girls are number one, wow, 
she's eating me out of house and home. So a, a big appetite, which is a good thing. And also an increase in shoe size. You know, well, I've had to go buy her new shoes. And usually this occurs in maybe the first six weeks of starting growth hormone. You typically see a big increase of growth within the first three months. The normal growth rate of a child is two to two and a half inches a year. After starting growth hormone, that can almost double as far as five inches a year for the first year and then taper off to just a normal growth rate and basically bring your daughter back back onto the growth chart. Also, another thing that's noticed is increase in lean muscle mass. Uh, I can reassure you and, and tell you that side effects from growth hormone in Turner syndrome girls are seen in less than 1%. So you can see it's, it's very rare, but it's important to be, to be educated in the side effects. The first thing that your daughter might complain about is a headache. This is caused by increased pressure in the brain. The big fancy word for it, I want you to know because you'll see it on the internet, your doctor may say it, is pseudotumor cerebri. It actually means fake tumor. So a headache as if there's you know a tumor in the brain basically a bad headache. This headache often starts soon after starting growth hormone. It's often difficult to relieve or to go away. If this should happen, you should just contact your pediatric endocrinologist immediately and um, notify them of the headaches. What your endocrinologist will do is to ask you to stop the growth hormone and to get your daughter a good eye exam. Um, as soon as the eye exam is done, if everything's fine, growth hormone can be restarted without any consequence. If there is increased pressure, the ophthalmologist is the one that can kind of, through a good eye exam, see if there's increased pressure in the brain. If there is, uh, it typically resolves within about three to four months after growth hormone is stopped. And most girls do find restarting growth hormone. Other things that uh, to think about are a slipped hip bone or something called slipped capital femoral epiphysis, or what we call SCIFE, S-C-F-E. This, if this should happen, can be corrected orthopedically. If there's scoliosis, this can worsen with growth hormone. And do understand that if there is scoliosis, just as if it can worsen with a big growth spurt. In a normal growing girl, this can happen. Another thing, particularly if there's a strong family history of diabetes, is the development of glucose intolerance or kind of a, a pre-diabetes state. I have seen this once. And the good thing is that all of these that I've mentioned, all of these side effects stop after the discontinuation of growth hormone. So once you stop growth hormone, these go away. So that's a good thing. But just bearing those things in mind, the overall benefits of growth hormone should be becoming clear. Not only the importance of height. And, you know, this might not be important for some girls. I do remember that growth hormone is important for bone mineral density, for prevention of osteoporosis. It is important for heart health. And being uh, taller, being as tall as you can be. And with growth hormone today, girls with Turner syndrome can be five feet and over. Again, bearing in mind that the average untreated woman with Turner syndrome can be 4'8". That is great news. But this can, can help self-esteem and also help in everyday life functions like going to the grocery store and reaching things on high shelves or driving, addressing age appropriately. So every even quarter of an inch is important. So your pediatric endocrinologist, once growth hormone is discussed and you agree to start with growth hormone, they will get it started with your insurance and they will set up training. You won't be on your own. You will come back into the office and they will set up what's called a training visit and give your first injection in the doctor's office. So that is very reassuring and something that I enjoy because we're all kind of in it together for the first injection. And then you can have your questions uh, that may come up right as you're doing the actual thing answered. You've started growth hormone, you're getting great growth. When do you stop it? Well, basically your pediatric endocrinologist 
we'll do what's called a bone age or an x-ray of your daughter's left hand. That show whether the bone plates or what we call epiphyses are still open or not. And bone plates close at a bone age of about 15, 15 and a half. So when these little lines, it'll just look like just filled in fingers, but with no horizontal lines at all, all the bone plates will be closed. When this happens, your pediatric endocrinologist will say, okay, we've gotten all the growth that needs to be achieved with growth hormone. So it's time to stop. How much will growth hormone cost? That's another big issue. Growth hormone is FDA approved, again, for Turner syndrome. So basically there really isn't, um, if you have private insurance, um, they should not deny growth hormone for the indication of Turner syndrome at all. And if they do, your pediatric endocrinologist will go to bat for you. There are several reimbursement plans that your pediatric endocrinologist can make you aware of. Each insurance company chooses a, a growth hormone company to partner with. There are several major ones, Nordotropin, Genotropin, Omnitrope. Growth hormone is manufactured in all of these companies the same way. It's the same molecule. They uh, have just been given the right to manufacture it and give it a name that they've decided upon. And insurance companies choose which one, which growth hormone company they want to partner with and they want to deal with. Someone from that company will contact you or should be contacting you within about two weeks from when your pediatric endocrinologist puts in, puts everything into um, the insurance application for growth hormone to tell you about reimbursement pro uh, programs to go over your financial situation to see how you can be helped. So um, it is a, a typically a very proactive thing, but you are your daughter's best advocate. So the only dumb question is when you don't ask, please be sure and just um, ask for any reimbursement possibilities. Um, there is a, um, a growth hormone that is only given by vial, by the old vial and syringe. Um, for those in the situation, should it happen, which it, it has never happened um, to me under the indication of Turner syndrome, but should an insurance company flat out deny it, they also have reimbursement plans and can help you with that. So there are several ways to, to get around the cost.